there is, of course, this exchange program that's going on mm -hmm. that uh, is a, a shocking revelation uh, unto itself. But what is more intriguing as uh, we're here talking about today is your evolution of how you went on from that environment to, to lead science in a whole new direction in the sense of this Ganesh particle, wow. in the sense of breaking apart the very fabric of creation. Give us an idea of what interaction you had with J-Rod that led you on this path well, where you are now with the Lotus well, Project. Well, the only, the only direct connection was, was the imparting of how life began. Right, his we, perspective. Wanted to, we wanted to finish that story. How, he showed you how the, the universe well, began? or Well, life no, began? no, no, no. He, he, he showed me how um, teardrops were separated at multiple, and I, 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 I suppose at the time that he was talking about cladism, but uh, how teardrops drops were separated into the main uh, domains of life. And the shocking thing about this, um, you know those little toys where you can press from the bottom and the imprint of your hand pops up? The needles. Right, yeah. Right. Um, through that, I saw uh, a human being's face come out of a red background. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it shocked me because you know, I had, for a short period of time at least, had, had been to Sunday school and learned about Adam and, and, and you know, the idea that he may have come from the, the red clay and all of that, but it came out of a red background. And I, uh, at that point, I was asking myself, am I looking at the birth of humanity here? And, and he said that that was his opinion about it, that he had learned from his mother. Is that right? Uh, and um, that's the only real connection. Okay. The, uh, the other thing, um, which you know, later on, we're talking 2001 now, um, when we went out, uh, the wife and myself went out to uh, Frenchman Mountain to do a fairly prosaic um, endosymbiosis study. It was fairly funded, but it was just to keep me happy while I was doing important things, things that they considered important. Uh, I was interested in eukaryotic evolution, so uh, we were out there looking for biotype. Mm -hmm. And I had made a, uh, I theorized that we were dealing with um, um, a triumvirate type original virus which may have related to panspermia. So we went out there and we were met by a, an older gentleman who talked about flames coming off from the Vishnu Schist area. He, in fact, was a Native American gentleman. Don't know his name, never saw him again. So I said, flames, that's interesting. So he kind of said, well, if you shine light on the rocks, you'll see flames coming from the rock. Well, I said, okay, well, fine. We'll, we'll work on this, this thing, and what the heck. So we put a laser on the rock and, uh, and uh, turned the film on, and gradually the laser went out, and I cussed the laser out, and it was a, a pen laser, you know, like, um, this, uh -huh. you know, one of the, the normal, normal 3A Laser type lasers, pointer. right? Yeah. Uh, and um, I didn't know why the laser went out. Well, the battery drained. We had run into something, and I had no idea what it was. It was totally by happenstance. This is on Frenchman's Mountains. Right. It was at and the. It was uh, just above the uh, Great Unconformity area, right off from uh, Lake Mead. And this is ancient bedrock. We're talking so 1.7 billion years old, the, the Vishnu Schist. But the area that we were at was just above the Vishnu Schist, which is going up into the Tapit sandstone area and where there is uh, potassium feldspar. And we were on a, a, um, a little cliff there of uh, feldspar. And um, so we took the, the video back home. Right. I thought, you know, big deal. And I watched it. Well, I had some Cladophora, uh, glomerata algae, that was sitting there because he said, you know, I had to have life. And we had some samples with us and all of that. We had to have life involved with it. Some biological samples right. was needed. Right. Okay. Uh, and we had taken them from elsewhere out of a wash because we I was going to use them when we got home. Um, and then I noticed in the video that there was a flare. It looked like a flare pass at, at six millimeters per second across the face of the Cladophora. And that's when the laser went out, right after that little flare passed. And I said, what the heck is this? So we went back and we tried to, to uh, replicate it, and we replicated it. Well, this moved on from there to dealing with just the rock, and finally we began delimiting the, the uh, intervening variables so that we knew what would cause the phenomenon. Uh, this is one of the most more controversial things that actually went out to the public, and that's why 
I know and you know what's going to be said near the end of the, the presentation, um, why I'm happy to be able to talk about it here today. Uh, in any case, we were gradually able to, with high performance, replicate the phenomenon both in a higher energy as well as a lower energy form. And we knew exactly what optics train we were to use with a compound microscope to do it. And the, to the layperson, that means? Uh, we figured out how to use a microscope to get it working right every time. Yeah. I'm sorry. And when you say get it working right, what in fact were you doing? Uh, what we were doing is we were stimulating the surface of any silicon oxide uh, with a laser not more powerful than, uh, in fact, not any more powerful than this, mm -hmm. uh, and a 9-volt battery, which was restricted, and uh, marine water, ocean water. Mm -hmm. And we learned with the right optics train, mm -hmm. the right restriction of energy across the surface, how to get a peculiar phenomenon to be evoked above the surface of the silicate, like quartz. When you say phenomenon, are we talking about uh, biophotons? Uh, Biophotons are involved, and in fact, we have film of them being involved. Well, we have some slides, too. Let's go back to the PowerPoint, because I, I think we have some demonstrations of what we were talking about as far as the, uh, the microscope images. You have a few here that are taken directly from your microscope view, I believe. Uh, yeah. That, that was filmed in the presence of a couple members of the public who, because we were not willing to provide the optics train, one of them flew from all the way from England. And then uh, after we wouldn't provide him with the optics train, after we told him that we wouldn't, oh, he did it twice, hmm. uh, that we would not provide him the optics train because uh, this can be turned into a weapon. And we're going to be showing in a week a film of how it can be turned into a weapon as well to the assembled audience that we'll speak about here in a moment. Okay. And what, uh, are we, what are we looking at in this slide here? You are looking at a peculiar plasma mm -hmm. phenomenon uh, off the surface of quartz. The round looking thing on top is actually what we nicknamed a portal. That is a singular phenomenon. The, the area immediately under that going from left to right is another one of the singular phenomenons. The material being ejected off to the right is an aggregate of material uh, which is assembled in the outer periphery of the phenomenon uh, and then is ejected out and affects cells in our environment. We're presently theorizing that this could be a, uh, a new variety of horizontal gene transfer, uh, something akin to um, what we call transduction, uh, and in fact uh, along a viral type uh, retroviral type pathway, but an augmented retroviral type pathway. Um, so what you're looking at here is you're looking at a portal firing a particle. And we came to nickname these, these particles by different names. The one which became the most famous nickname was called a Ganesh particle. And we did so only because we had to call them something. We didn't know what they are, and to date we still truly don't know exactly what they are. We know more of what they do. We've assembled a proposed uh, preliminary system, um, but we don't know exactly what they truly are. Um, it is, it's been suggested by such people as uh, Bill Hamilton um, that they may be the Pavitrakas of the ancients, the ancient Hindus. From their Sanskrit, from their Vedas? Absolutely. Uh, that, that these, these uh, metamaterials, these uh, subtle matter materials, are the things which they believe come and animate their, their idols. Um, I'm not certain, but it's possible. Uh, you're looking at a high resolution image uh, annotated on bottom uh, with, with what you're looking at, as well as anna annotated by uh, uh, perspective on the top of a portal. This image was uh, actually enhanced using software from S4. I was allowed to borrow some software for a while. Is that right? Interesting. Yep. Uh, we nicknamed it Shady Soft because the, the nickname for S4 is the Shady Rest, the old uh, um, uh, Petticoat Junction nicknames. Uh, and uh, what you see in the top center is the object of greatest interest to me, the thing which is bordered or bracketed by the uh, yellow brackets. They're micro shards. Uh, we believe to be micro shards of quartz crystals. What these particles seem to be 
is they seem to be in clothed micro shards that are then in acoustic communication with the source, which would be somewhere near the center of the, of the portal ring. What that source is, we do not know. Um, and we know that they respond to acoustic stimulation because of uh, Marcia's work with them. She began speaking to me while she was watching what came to be known as a Selkie, a class three, a uh, class C particle. And she began speaking to me. And um, as she spoke, she watched its behavior change. So she finally started saying, boo, boo. And she watched it change as she was over the microscope. Well, from there, we learned that, in fact, they respond to acoustic stimulation. Which is a and, whole other area of research. And we're going to be showing absolute, absolute, undeniable, reproducible proof of that soon. Hmm. This, of course, is... Uh, that was the explosion. This right here. Yep. If you put the wrong kind of tones into the system, what you see being ejected to the upper left mm -hmm. was the head of my microscope and it was lodged into the ceiling of my apartment. So this actually during blew this up your, your very expensive... Yes, wine. yes. Uh, um, well, I, I, I didn't buy it, thank God. But, right. uh, yes, it was a, it was a, a compound microscope. Mm. The large ball of light in the center is a ball of heat. You can see the heat spreading down onto the table. Um, we have film of this. You're just seeing a still of it. We've got actual film of the accident happen and, uh, happening, and uh, the color image is on the right. The, the little spot of red uh, on the right was the flash off from my wife's face as the explosion occurred. I yelled down. I got down onto the floor. Marcia was watching through the, um, the Internet cam from another perspective. In other words, we have it from two, per two perspectives as the explosion happened. Um, she was severely burned during it. She lost her eyebrows and all of that. She didn't get down in time. Um, it's so lucky that uh, that's uh, all that happened, really, when you think about it. You're, yeah, you're tinkering I, with the, with we the knew fabric too. of creation here, and um, we're going to get into uh, the fact that you have had some sort of angelic experience, whether it's related to this research or not. Uh, well, let me ask you right now, do you, do you think it is? Yep. Yeah. Because uh, I, I, I don't, I, I, I'm hesitant to apply the word angel. It's, it's a lack of a better word, but it's a, some sort of, uh, I, I wouldn't say a and, divine. And I, and I would probably, while I will not deny what happened to me years ago when I was very sick, mm -hmm. um, and the Catholic Church has this on, on record. You had a, uh, from a 19, high fever. And 1981. No, no, I had a, a demyelinating process. I was dying. I was blind and dying, and uh, the demyelination process went away instantly. It happened here in uh, Las Vegas at a, um, um, a healing service uh, from Father Ralph Diorio, uh, who is a known healer out of uh, Worcester, Worcester uh, Massachusetts. Um, and uh, this is on record with the Catholic Church. It's verified. The a spontaneous, miraculous healing, I, for lack of a better it phrase. was a miraculous healing. Mm -hmm. I, I have no doubt that the, 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 the love that was encountered at that moment goes beyond uh, Mere words. Mere mortal. Influence. Though there are no words. Mm. Well, there are no words. You, of course, uh, in addition to talking about the, the uh, timeline paradox, which we'll get into, mm -hmm. this uh, uh, angelic uh, phenomenon uh, first appeared uh, in, in the uh, context of your work uh, right, and if, if there if there were no if there were no photographs of this, I, I would. <laughs> everybody around me, I would have told just shut your mouth. Mm. You, know, I'm, you know, I'm being honest about it. I would yeah. not have wanted this out to the public at all, yeah. um, because such things are very comfortable when you read about them occurring thousands of years ago. But when kind it's of like to you. kind of like renaissances. They're great a few hundred years later, but yeah. while they're happening, they're real That's bad. Yeah. Uh, you know, a lot of contentious things occur. But you've, um, you've had this... It walked through the wall at yeah. me, and we have film. Uh, she's got full-color uh, video film of it, and we've got freeze frames uh, images right. here. And while I find them, t uh, set up the, the stage, if you would, because this is, a, this is an extraordinary component to all this. Uh, we're dealing with extraterrestrials. We're dealing with a timeline paradox. And then, out of the blue, almost, we're seeing that... Symbiosis study. It was... 
fairly funded, but it was just to keep me happy while I was doing important things, that, things that they considered important. Uh, I was interested in eukaryotic evolution, so uh, we were out there looking for biotite. And I had made a, uh, I theorized that we were dealing with um, um, a triumvirate type original virus which may have related to panspermia. So we went out there and we were met by a, an older gentleman who talked about flames coming off from the Vishnu schist area. He in fact There is, of course, this exchange program that's going on mm -hmm. that uh, is a, a shocking revelation uh, unto itself. But what is more intriguing as uh, we're here talking about today is your evolution of how you went on from that environment to, to lead science in a whole new direction in the sense of this Ganesh particle, wow. in the sense of breaking apart the very fabric of red background. And I, uh, at that point, I was asking myself, am I looking at the birth of humanity here? And, and he said that that was his opinion about it, that he had learned from his mother. Is that right? Uh, and um, that's the only real connection. Okay. The, uh, the other thing, um, which you know, later on, we're talking 2001 now, um, when we went out, uh, the wife and myself went out to uh, Frenchman Mountain, to do a fairly prosaic um, endocytic creation. Give us an idea of what interaction you had with J-Rod that led you on this path well, where you are now with the Lotus Project. Well, the only, the only direct connection was, was the imparting of how life began right. from and his we perspective. Wanted to, we wanted to finish that story. How, he showed you how the, the universe well, began or well, life no, began? No, no, no. He, he, he showed me how um, teardrops were separated at multiple, and I, 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 I suppose at the time that he was talking about cladism, but uh, how teardrops drops were separated into the main uh, domains of life. And the shocking thing about this, um, you know those little toys where you can press from the bottom and the imprint of your hand pops up? The needles. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, through that, I saw a, a human being's face come out of a red background. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it shocked me because you know, I had, for a short period of time at least, had, had been to Sunday school and learned about Adam and, and, and you know, the idea that he may have come from the, the red clay and all of that. But it came out of a red